This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. So the title of this video is Derivatives, Derivation and Explanation. In this video, I'm going to start with the definition of slope. I'm going to use that definition of slope to derive the formula for derivative. I'm going to provide a helpful graphical representation of what's happening, and I'm going to explain what the meaning is of a derivative. Let's get started. So first thing we should do is start with a function. So let's say that we start with a arbitrary curve. I'm just going to whittle out here a curve. And uh, what I want to do is talk about a few points that are on this curve. So let's say we had a point here. And let's say what we had a point over here. So if we have these two points, these two points have a corresponding x value and a corresponding y value. So, of course, I'm going to call this x, I'm going to call this y. Now, a fancy way of describing y is using function notation, f of x. Thank you, Leibniz. All right, so here, co-inventor of calculus. So here, uh, this point over here has a corresponding x value. Now, this point is going to be um, some distance to the right of our original point. So I'm going to say it is h units to the right. So in other words, I don't know how far it is, but it's h units to the right of x. So therefore, the corresponding x value of that point would be x plus h. Now the y value of this point would be f of x plus h. I have a hard time squeezing it in there, but that's f of x plus h right there, the corresponding y value. So um, what I could do is I could draw a line between these two points and then what I can do is I could calculate the slope of that line. Okay, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to show what that slope looks like. So the slope, traditionally we use the letter M to represent slope, would be Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Okay, so that's the definition of slope. And really, if this curve uh, represents, let's say, distance, the distance of some object in time, then drawing a line between those two represents the average velocity between those two distances. Okay, so this slope formula represents average velocity. Okay, so how else could we write this? What we can do is we could say that the slope is, and with respect to the points on this curve, I'm going to say that I have for the second point right here, its y value is x plus h, and its corresponding x value is, of course, x plus h. Now I'm going to subtract the first point. Here's the first point. So the y value there is f of x. And the uh, x value is, of course, x. Now you can see that if I subtract, if I actually do go through the subtraction and clean this up, the numerator, no, there's not really much I could do with it. OK, but the denominator, you can see the x's cancel, and I get h. Okay, so this is what would happen if I would allow um, the cleanup of this formula. And so I still have the same formula, um, but it's just been cleaned up a little bit. Now what I want to do is take this formula and apply some pre-calculus um, to it. Like, um, for instance, if I were to represent um, this function, or I should say this ratio, um, what I want to do is take this ratio and find the limit as h approaches 0. Okay, now what does this mean? You know, I, I can write these symbols, but if you don't know what this represents, it's going to be kind of meaningless to you. All right, now what this represents is imagine if I were to take this point and I were to move this point closer and closer to the first point. So you're, you're letting the point slide along the curve. So um, I could take 
this point and I can move it over here and I would say that I have a different average rate of change between the point, the original point and this new point. I could slide the point over here. I'd have a different average rate of change between those two. But as I'm getting closer and closer to this point, the average rate of change is looking a little bit different until eventually this point reaches um, the first point. And in that case, h would become zero. In other words, the, different, the distance between the point and the original point shrinks to zero. And I basically have the two points resting on top of each other. And that means the slope of the line connecting them would be tangent to the original curve. Okay, so these lines that I was drawing here before, those lines are called secant lines because they intersect the curve twice. But when I let this point come closer and closer to this original point, the slope of the line is tangent to the curve and means it only intersects the curve once at this location in the neighborhood of those points. So uh, that's why I would call this the slope of the tangent line. That's what this represents, the slope of the tangent line, or sometimes we call this the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, so that's what this formula represents, the instantaneous rate of change. Okay, in my next uh, section, I'm going to explain a little bit more detail what this represents, but you're going to see this formula popping up a lot um, when we do uh, derivatives and in future videos. Okay, well, let's take a look at the next section here real quick. So in the last section, we saw that we were dealing with f of x. f of x stood for distance over time. Okay, so I then pulled out the slope formula drew the secant line, that secant line stood for the average rate of change. Or sometimes we call that the average velocity. So I'm going to put that in there too. Average velocity. Alright, well this is the notation you use for derivatives. So the formula that we came up for derivative, we say it's f prime of x. This would mean it's the first derivative. That little prime sign means it is the first derivative. So this stands for the instantaneous. Instantaneous rate of change. Meanwhile, after we talk about the instantaneous rate of change, or in other words, the velocity at any particular moment in time, we have f double prime, otherwise known as the second derivative. So basically, you take the derivative of the derivative. That would be the second derivative. This is um, acceleration. So as velocity changes, the change of velocity we call acceleration. Okay, so this is the conceptual understanding of what's happening when you're actually taking or calculating a derivative. Okay, so it's been a pleasure talking to you about derivatives today. Make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our lessons, our interactive quizzes, and our instructional videos. Take care. Calculus isn't just for college. <laughs>